Our next speaker is here to talk about a different kind of energy storage challenge. David Mechanic is pursuing his PhD at Stanford and doing game-changing research on the future of flexible, stretchable batteries. And David is uh, also a member of the Stanford ski team. So as the winter approaches, he'll be maybe leaving the uh, lab for a little bit to go race down the slopes uh, with the Stanford Jersey Bridge ski team. Please welcome. If there's snow, <laughs> David McKenna. Yeah, no snow. Thanks. If you've seen the movie Star Wars, you're familiar with Luke Skywalker's mechanical hand that magically seems like a human hand. This type of technology is science fiction, but breakthroughs in the lab are making these skin-like electronics a reality. We've got to think about how we're going to power these things. Today, we use one type of battery, an 18650 cell, for basically every application, from consumer electronics to laptops to home storage and grid storage. And even though these applications have very different size scales, we use the same battery for every single one. If we look at the trends in, oh, I'm going to have 15 more seconds on this slide, I guess. <laughs> 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 Super sorry. So yeah, it's 65 millimeters long, 18 millimeters. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, but yeah, so we use the same battery for everything. If we look at consumer electronics, it's obvious that these things are getting smaller and smaller. From 40 years ago, when we had computers that take up the entire room, to today, where we have these devices we can hold in our hand that have a million times the computing power. These things are constantly getting smaller. And that trend is only going to continue. Whether it's Fitbits that we wear on our wrists, VR things that we put on our faces, or even some sort of research technologies, such as implantable heart monitors or uh, sensors on the brain that we use to help patients recover from surgery in the lab. This contact between electronics and human skin is becoming more intimate. Today, consumer electronics uh, are using these same rigid batteries that take up a large portion of the device. As you can see in all these devices, even as they get closer to the human skin, from a phone to a watch to a wearable sensor, these things are still powered by large rigid batteries. And so if we want to make these kind of applications that are more intimately coupled to the human body in reality, we need to make these, we need to replace these batteries with ones that are flexible and conformable and actually can uh, interface with our human body. In order to understand why we can't do that today, we need to know how a battery works. A battery consists of three major components, an anode, an electrolyte, and a cathode. Electrons travel from the anode to the cathode, where they undergo a redox reaction uh, to store the energy. If we zoom in on uh, what this battery looks like from more a molecular level, this battery is all held together by polymers. The cathode is held together by a polymeric binder, PVDF, that is rigid and will break instantly upon stretching. Additionally, the electrolyte is made of materials such as PEO, or uh, polyethylene, which are both very weak, mechanically uh, non-robust polymers. And so because our batteries are held together with all these materials, they currently cannot be stretched and are not suitable for applications that I'm talking about. However, these applications are important, so this hasn't stopped people from trying to implement these stretchable batteries into, uh, or these rigid materials into stretchable batteries. Examples include origami-like batteries, where you can stretch and release batteries like origami, as well as battery structures that have rigid islands connect connected by serpentine interconnects. We also have seen batteries that have an accordion-like structure that can, that can expand and contract by kind of unfolding, as well as spring-like batteries where these rigid materials are wrapped around a stretchable rod substrate. However, the problem with all these technologies, even though they're great examples of stretchable batteries, is that they can't compete on size, uh, on scale, or on cost compared to traditional battery manufacturing techniques. Battery manufacturing techniques today are done on a massive scale in a roll-to-roll -roll setting, and these nano and micro-level engineering techniques are simply too expensive. Ideally, what we'd like to do to make these sort of stretchable and conformable batteries is to replace the existing polymers that hold these batteries together with stretchable polymers that also are electronically compatible within the battery. Fortunately, our research in the BOW group focuses on developing these stretchable polymer materials for electronics. We made stretchable, we use stretchable polymers for electronics and transistors, displays, electrodes, and sensors, and now we, uh, we're trying to develop these for stretchable batteries as well. The key polymer science behind our materials is the concept of dynamic bonding. Our polymers upon stretching have some dynamic bonding units that break, they can then reform upon release, allowing these to be extremely extensible, and we can also do any sort of other chemistry we want on the other regions of the polymers in order to tailor them for specific electronic applications. We've been able to develop a polymer that we can mix with existing battery materials 
and cast it onto a slurry, some into a slurry similar to an existing battery fabrication procedure to create large scale uh, stretchable battery electrodes. We've been able to use these polymers to reinvent every single part of the battery in order to create this type of uh, stretchable energy device that you can see here that can power an LED even while it's being stretched to about 75 uh, or 1.75 times its original length. This is really exciting because we have developed these soft uh, types of batteries, but the next thing we want to do is actually see if we can use this for a real application such as a heart monitor. We also want to see if there's any potential to scale these up to larger and larger sizes, as well as try to use some less specialty polymers to bring the cost down. One thing I want to leave you with to think about today is that I've shown you an example of how we can develop stretchable materials in order to create batteries for these sort of implantable applications. However, we can also imagine that we might want our battery to have different mechanical properties for other applications. And so we can imagine using, designing some polymer materials like Kevlar in order to make batteries that might be more structural for things that could be used in uh, airplanes, for instance. And so by using this idea of polymer design and polymer engineering, we can ideally create a battery that's specifically suited for every application. Thanks.